students assalamu alaikum today we will discuss about matter everything around us is made up of matter chair desk marker pencil air all these things are matter what is matter matter is defined as a substance which occupies some space and has certain weight matter exists in three physical states solids liquids and gases all these three physical states are chemically same but they differ in the arrangement of their particles let's have a look of these particles you see in gaseous state atoms or molecules are far apart from each other in liquids they are closer and in solids they are compactly arranged because intermolecular forces are very strong in case of solids they are weaker in liquids and weakest in gases let's start with the gases first gases have some distinct properties on the basis of which we can distinguish this physical state of matter from the other two for example gases don't have a definite volume they don't have a definite shape they can be compressed to any degree of volume similarly they can be expanded they can be mixed into one another without a chemical reaction gases expand on heating and contract on cooling all these physical properties of gases can be explained on the basis of few simple equations which relate temperature volume and pressure boyle's law which explains the compressibility and expansion of a gas let's discuss it first boyle's law states that at constant temperature volume of a given mass of a gas is inversely proportional to its pressure boyle's law can be expressed mathematically volume of a given mass of a gas is inversely proportional to its pressure at constant temperature or vp is equal to constant boyle's law can be interpreted by kinetic molecular theory of gases suppose we have a gas which is enclosed in a piston if we increase the pressure on the gas collision of gas molecules with one another and with the walls of the container increases thus by increasing pressure collision per second increases which results in the increase in pressure of the gas there is another law which explains the expansion of a gas on heating and contraction on cooling this law is charles law it can be stated as the volume of a fixed mass of a gas is directly proportional to the absolute temperature at constant pressure charles law can also be expressed mathematically volume of a given mass of a gas is directly proportional to its temperature at constant pressure or v over t is equal to constant we can also give kinetic molecular interpretation of this law for example if we have a gas which is enclosed in a piston if we heat this gas the temperature of the gas increases that is the kin average kinetic energy of the molecules increases so by the increase in the average kinetic energy of the molecules the collision of the gas molecules with one another and with the walls of the container increase this will increase the volume of the gas because of the pressure which was exerted by the gas the role of diffusion of gases is governed by gram's law 
Gram's law can be stated as the rates of diffusion of two gases are inversely proportional to the square roots of their densities or molecular weights at the same pressure and temperature or it can be defined as the rates of effusion of two gases at the same pressure and temperature are inversely proportional to the square root of their densities or molecular weights. Mathematically, Graham's law can be expressed as if we have two gases named one, marked 1 and 2, then Graham's law can be expressed mathematically for them R1 over R2 is equal to under the root D2 over D1 is equal to M2 over M1 under the root where R1 is the rate of effusion or diffusion of first gas and R2 is the rate of effusion or diffusion of second gas. D2 is the density of second gas, D1 is the density of first gas, M2 is the molecular weight of second gas and M1 is the molecular weight of first gas. We can verify Graham's law experimentally also by taking a long glass tube. At the two ends of this long glass tube we have cotton swab soaked in hydrochloric acid at one end and cotton swab soaked in ammonia solution at the other end. We will adjust these two cotton swabs simultaneously so that the two gases will start traveling from the opposite ends and they will meet at a point. Their point of meeting will be indicated in the form of a white smoke ring. After measuring the distance traveled by two gases, we can calculate the rates of diffusion of these gases. The velocity of ammonia divided by velocity of hydrochloric acid is equal to distance covered by ammonia divided by distance covered by hydrochloric acid. As measured, the distance traveled by ammonia from one end is 60 centimeter whereas distance covered by hydrochloric acid hydrogen chloride is 40 centimeter. This will become 1.5. So rates of diffusion of two gases can be calculated relatively. R for NH3 that is for ammonia divided by rate of diffusion of hydrogen chloride is equal to density of hydrogen chloride divided by density of ammonia under the root according to Graham's law. After putting the values we have value which is 1.48. You see that this value is approximately equal to 1.5. Similarly rate of diffusion of ammonia divided by rate of diffusion of hydro hydrogen chloride is equal to molecular weight of hydrogen chloride divided by molecular weight of ammonia under the root. After putting the values we get 1.46 which is approximately equal to 1.5. So these results verify Graham's law. Dear students, let's discuss liquids now. When a sample of a gas is compressed, intermolecular force of attraction overcome kinetic energy of the molecules. At this point, condensation which can be liquefaction or solidification occurs. Intermolecular forces play a very important role among liquids. Intermolecular forces can be of three types, dipole-dipole interactions, hydrogen bonding, or dispersion forces which are also called London forces. Together these forces of attraction are called van der Waals forces of attraction. Intermolecular forces of attraction play a very important role in liquids. Many physical properties for example boiling point, heat of vaporization, 
heat of fusion can be explained on the basis of intermolecular forces of attraction. Let me explain you intermolecular force of attraction which is present among water molecules. Here I have a molecule of water. In this model, yellow ball represents oxygen atom and these two red balls represent hydrogen atoms. Oxygen atom is bonded with these two hydrogen atoms through covalent bonds. As oxygen atom is more electronegative than hydrogen atom, therefore hydrogen atom of each water molecule will interact, will be attracted with the electronegative atom, oxygen atom of the neighboring molecule. I'll show you this interaction in a card. Here we have many water molecules. You see hydrogen of one molecule interacts with the oxygen atom of the neighboring molecule. This type of interaction or this type of attractive force which develops when hydrogen is bonded with a more electronegative atom, this hydrogen is weakly attracted with the electronegative atom of the neighboring molecule. This type of attractive force is known as hydrogen bonding and strong hydrogen bonding is present in water. Due to this strong hydrogen bonding, many physical properties of water can be explained. The process of evaporation can also be explained on the basis of intermolecular forces of attraction present in liquids. Evaporation is defined as the process in which molecules of a liquid with greater kinetic energy leave the liquid in the form of vapors. We can also explain by the process of evaporation why some liquids produce cooling effect on the surface after evaporation. Here we have two liquids. In one beaker we have water and in another we have acetone. We can explain now why acetone evaporates much more quickly than water. What happens inside the liquid? In fact, molecules of acetone absorb heat from its surroundings. Thus, the molecules with greater kinetic energy will leave the liquid at ordinary temperature and evaporate, leaving behind molecules with higher kinetic energy. Therefore, acetone will produce a cooling effect on the skin. Water evaporates slowly as compared to acetone. This is due to intermolecular force of attraction which is present among the molecules of water. The phenomenon of capillary action can also be explained on the basis of intermolecular forces of attraction. Capillary action is defined as the rise of a liquid through a small capillary tube. We have colored water in this beaker and these are three capillary tubes with different diameters. If I put these capillary tubes in colored water, the height of the liquid rising in the capillary tube depends upon the diameter of the tubes. Tubes of narrower bores can show more height. You can see in this capillary tube the height of the column. The height of the column is decided by compromise of upward deriving force and the downward gravitational pull. Dear students, it is due to capillary action that water rises from soil in plants through roots. Surface tension, another phenomenon which can be explained on the basis of intermolecular forces of attraction. Surface tension is defined as the minimum amount of energy which is required to expand the surface of a liquid by unit area. Intermolecular forces of attraction also play a very important role for the surface tension of a liquid. Stronger the intermolecular forces of attraction, more will be the surface tension. 
We can explain here why detergents are able to wash away dust particles from the fabrics. What happens actually? Detergents or surfactants reduce surface tension of water molecules, thus makes it able to wet the surface of a fabric. And finally, it washes dust particles from the surface. Surface tension is measured in the lab by an apparatus which is known as stalagmometer. Here we have this apparatus. This is stalagmometer. We can measure the surface tension of a liquid relative to water. Viscosity is another property of liquid which is also explained on the basis of intermolecular forces of attraction. Viscosity is defined as the resistance of a liquid to flow. We can explain on the basis of viscosity why some liquids flow slowly than the others. For example, honey and in this beaker we have water. You can see that honey is quite viscous. The resistance to flow is because of the internal friction among the layers of molecules. One layer of molecule resist the other layer of molecules to flow. That's why honey is more viscous. If we compare it with water, you see water can flow very easily. In the lab, we can measure viscosity of different liquids relative to water. The relative viscosity of a liquid is defined as the ratio of the viscosity of liquid to the viscosity of water taken as standard. Here we have a formula eta L over eta W is equal to dL TL divided by dW TW where eta L stands for the viscosity of the liquid eta w stands for the viscosity of water dl and dw are densities of liquid and water respectively and tl is the time noted for the liquid and tw is the time noted for water the viscosity of water is taken as standard which is 1 centipoise at 25 degree centigrade Solids, another physical state of matter. Solids are those substances which have definite volume and they have definite shape. When a substance is solidified, intermolecular forces overcome the kinetic energy of the molecules. Thus, we find only vibratory motions in the molecules instead of translatory. Almost all solids exist in the crystalline forms. A crystal can be defined as a solid having definite geometric shape bounded by plane surfaces intersecting at fixed angles. We have different examples of crystals. Here we have example of sugar. You see crystals of sugar. Similarly, these are crystals of sodium chloride, common salt, which we use in our kitchen. A crystal is made up of many unit cells, which are arranged in a definite pattern. A unit cell may be defined as the smallest unit of volume of a crystal, which has all the characteristics of its pattern. These unit cells in a crystal are arranged in three dimensions. This regular repeated array of points is known as crystal lattice or space lattice. For example, this is 
a cubic crystal lattice of sodium chloride. You see, the ions are arranged in three dimensions and these ions are held by electrostatic forces of attraction. Substances can be divided into two categories on the basis of the shapes of the crystals. Substances can be isomorphous or polymorphous. Isomorphism is the phenomenon in which two or more than two substances exist in the same crystalline form. For example, sodium chloride, sodium fluoride exist in the same crystalline form and both these salts have cubic crystals. Here we have a model of the crystal of sodium chloride. Same arrangement is found in sodium fluoride also. So both these substances are isomorphous. Polymorphism is the phenomenon in which a substance exists in two or more than two crystalline forms. For example, carbon. Carbon has three allotropic forms, diamond, graphite and buckyballs. It also exists in amorphous forms, for example, coal, charcoal. But here we are discussing the crystals of diamond and graphite. A unit cell in diamond can be represented by this model. Each carbon atom is linked with four other carbon atoms through covalent bonds and this unit cell is repeated several times and we get a network pattern which accounts for the hardness in diamond. The arrangement of atoms can be shown in a diagram also. Here we have two allotropes of carbon. You see that carbon exists in these two crystalline forms. This is the arrangement of atoms in diamond in which each carbon is linked with four other carbon atoms in a tetrahedral manner through covalent bonds. Thus we got, get a network pattern of carbon atoms. In graphite, each carbon is linked with three other carbon atoms in hexagonal rings and these hexagonal rings are arranged in parallel layers. One layer can slide over another layer. Crystals can be classified into four types. Number one, metallic crystals. Number two, ionic crystals. Number three, covalent crystals. And number four, molecular crystals. So this is all about solids. Dear students, let me summarize you all we have discussed today. Matter exists in three physical states, solids, liquids and gases. These three physical states differ in the arrangement of their particles. Gases have some properties on the basis of which this state is easier to explain, though we cannot see the molecules of the gas, but we can explain the behavior of gas under certain conditions. Liquids and solids can be seen on the other hand. Therefore, intermolecular forces are stronger in liquids, strongest in solids, and weakest in gases. We see several different types of crystals of different solids. Crystalline solids are also called true solids. Okay, this is all we have discussed today. Dear students, if you have any question in your minds, please do write us. Thank you. Allah Hafiz. Thank you.